If you have an ambition to see a proboscis monkey in the wild, then you'll have to go to Borneo. That's the only place in the world that it's found. Even here it's fairly rare, mainly found along rivers in mangrove forests. One of the best places to get close views of it is in Bako National Park in Sarawak. This is part of a relatively small area of mangroves within the park. But you're unlikely to see any proboscis monkeys here. They seem to prefer the drier forests nearby. To allow sufficient space for their large, multi-chambered stomach, proboscis monkeys have prominent pot bellies, especially in these males. Because of this enhanced digestive system, proboscis monkeys can eat a greater variety of leaves than in other primates. The function of the long, flexible nose seen in the males has been the subject of some speculation. Their loud vocalisations are attractive to females, and probably the louder the better. And it could be that the large floppy nose serves to amplify the sound. The males are much larger than the females and far more richly coloured. This rusty orange individual is about as handsome as they come. But note the prominent white tail hanging down in Borneo, unique to this monkey. Proboscis monkeys spend hours each day stuffing themselves with leaves at a hectic pace. So approaching midday, it's time for a nap. This particular male is also in charge of a group of seven to eight females, so they keep him busy as well. Not all males are so lucky. Some have to spend lonely lives as bachelors. One such lonesome individual often fed in a tree near to my lodge. While sitting on my veranda, I could see his prominent white tail dangling down. One evening, as the sun began to set, he climbed right to the top of the tree. Then, beautifully illuminated by the warm evening light, he sat and filled himself with leaves for nearly ten minutes. In males, who are yet to become sexually mature, the nose is far less prominent. About the same length as in the females. Up until now, we've seen many different kinds of leaves being consumed. In fact, studies have shown that up to 55 different kinds of leaves may be included in the diet. And then, when they're in season, fruits begin to figure more prominently. These tend to be plucked individually by hand before being placed in the mouth. With leaves, quality generally varies with age. Older leaves are likely to have heavy doses of defensive chemicals. That's why this monkey is only selecting young yellow leaves. They contain lower levels of defensive compounds. Needing to be fussy eaters greatly extends the amount of time needed to find suitable food and also the area to be covered. This forces them to climb right to the tops of the tallest trees. Very frustrating for would-be photographers who are only using phones. Fortunately, I shot this on a 600mm lens. Being strong climbers and agile jumpers, proboscis monkeys are able to cover a large area in a short time. As I mentioned, in the females, the nose is about the same size as in immature males. But why the female should have an enlarged nose at all is all part of the mystery surrounding the proboscis monkey. In this particular group, this was the only female with a baby. So I was really fortunate that she came so close and for quite a long time. I always enjoy watching baby monkeys at play. It's a pity there were no playmates. In a different group, which lived in the forest near to my room, there was also just a single baby. But this was much younger than the one that you've just seen.
Once the babies have been weaned, they leave their mother and begin an independent life. No longer relying on their mother's milk, they spend the day searching for leaves, as in the adults. And thus came the culmination of my enjoyable month's filming in Baco National Park.